Welcome to the five-year anniversary party for LIC Reading Series, y'all. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna attempt to open this uh, bottle of thing that sparkles. I'd like to say a few things about the series. We got a happy five from uh, Yvonne in the audience. Thank you, Yvonne. Oh, we have a guest star for a second here. She's just looking at you. That, Hi, everybody. So in the last five years of the series, I managed to make two humans. That was one of them. She just turned one a couple weeks ago. All right. Good job on the human making. Thank you, Carly. <laughs> um, I should say, uh, for anyone who's just tuning in and being like, what did I join? I have no idea what LIC Reading Series is. Who are all these very attractive people? I will tell you. Uh, LIC Reading Series is five years old. It's a monthly reading series in Long Island City, Queens. My name's Catherine Lasota. I'm the host. I'm gonna break something. <sighs> and um, I got out the most obnoxious champagne flute I could find. so that I could have a little bubbly. All right. Hmm. All right. I'm gonna go through a few, um, few intros here. So we started at LIC Bar in April, 2015. And uh, we just had our five year birthday, I guess last month, cause it's May 2nd now. But we were able to gather all these amazing alumni together. Um, and while we all have a little bit of sip from whatever we're drinking, I think I'm just going to show you some pictures of uh, some of the alumni that are here from when they were at the series. That sound fun? All right. See if it works. Share screen. Do you guys see some pictures? No. I bet you will as soon as I click share. Watch this. Do you guys see some pictures? All right. Yep. All right, I think we might be having Bridget Davis here tonight. We have, this is Nicole Heratunian at our very, our second event ever. Amazing. Paul Lisicki, who is just on um, our new video show that we're having with Literary Hub this week in conversation with Alexander Chi. Here's, um, I think all three of these guys might be here tonight. This is Julie Button, Sarah Gerard, and Megan Abbott. Scott Cheshire, I think, is in the house. What else we got? Uh, we got Jason Tugaw is in the house. I think we have uh, Marie Helene Bertino there in the middle is with us. Morgan Jerkins is here. There she is again with her reading mates. Ryan Chapman had something very important to say, and I think it was the LSE Reading Series is number one. <laughs> uh, Amy Shern, and an evening, I believe we had the fire roaring in the carriage house of LIC Bar. Um, here we have Justin Taylor, who's also, he was in the very first year we had. He's here with Akil Sharma and Sam Lipsight. Shit, man, I got old. Yeah, we all got old, man. Uh, Carly Moore, who's been a two-time reader at the series, is here. Ah, and we have Tracy O'Neill. That was a fun event. I think we got Jen Baker and uh, Jesse Chafee joining us as well. That's David Bergerard in the middle. And uh, is that the end of our, that's the end of our, let's, let's go back and see all these lovely people in person while I, I tell you some more things about what we're gonna do tonight. Alrighty. There y'all are. I think at a certain point I might, unmute you because it's so weird to talk into the void and to like not hear any sound at all or any any reply but i just want to tell you a few things about the series and i'm going to first of all bring you to um gus rodriguez who uh is with lic bar where the series has been the whole time gus um i don't know if you have any any words to share with us about um, any fond memories or anything to share about the series over the years? Oh, it's such a great thing that you brought to LIC Bar. It really helped to really 
expand our cultural uh, programming that we do at Dolly C Bar in, in a really significant way. And there's been so many great memories. Uh, uh, John Leguizamo comes right to mind, but this I've learned and was introduced to so many wonderful authors and creative minds and great discussion. And I, I thank you for bringing that to Dolly C Bar, Catherine. Happy birthday, too. Cheers. Cheers, man. Hey, listen. I just want to thank Gus for over the years, always being the man who makes sure that everything is set up and rolling and the chairs are in place and the mics are in place. And like, he makes the night go so smoothly and we couldn't do it without you, Gus. So I want to say cheers to you. Um, you. And you mentioned like there, are, we've had so many uh, interesting guests over the years. They're not all here. We've had uh, Eileen Miles, Minjin Lee, Sadie Jones, Jim Shepard, Lynn Tillman, Victor Laval, John Languizamo was here with Tracy O'Neill when she was here. Um, Alexander Chi, Akil Sharma, who you saw, Sam Lipsay, Nana Kwame, Jebrenya, so many great people, um, and uh, including this guy who does mic check. Where's daddy? Every night now. Where's daddy? This is my son. He's in the bathroom. Go join him. <laughs> um, but I think, I think I'm going to unmute you guys for a second because before we move on to something else, Let's see. I'm gonna light. Did I unmute you guys? Are you unmuted? Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I feel unmuted. You feel <laughs> do you feel right. exposed? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love this. Yes, it is like Hollywood Squares, Tracy. Okay. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is I have fire. Ooh. Ooh. And a candle on a cake. Let's sing happy birthday to the series. <laughs> then do we all get cake? <laughs> yes, I will push it through my computer screen. That's how my computer works. It's magic. Yeah. Thank you. Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, LSE Reading Series. Happy birthday to you. All right, everybody has to blow this candle with me. I go bush. Oh, oh my God. How's it? <laughs> I'm not oh, that was great. <laughs> my God, it worked. That is not in line with protocol for how you're supposed to share cake and blow on each other's cake right now. <laughs> but we'll be okay. No. All right. The next person I want to bring to the forefront, just for a second, if I could, is um, someone who literally like it could not happen without. And that's our intern, Nadine Santoro. And I think, can everyone just like applaud very, very, very highly for Nadine right now? Yay, Nadine! Yay. Yay. Woo. Yay. Woo. Thank you. Thank you. Nadine makes the social media happen. She makes the recordings happen. She even helped me with some tech before we started here tonight at eight o'clock. There's nothing I can do on my own. Nadine, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And um, yes, happy birthday to Catherine. Everyone, let's all have a little toast to Catherine's birthday. She's putting this all together on her birthday. She put a lot of work into this. Um, I've been, interning with the reading series for a little over two years now, I guess. And um, it's so special to me. And when I started interning, um, I lived in Brooklyn and not Queens. Boo. And now I live in Queens. It's way better. And um, I'm so happy to be part of literary community here. We've met so many amazing authors. Um, and it's such a, a joy to work with Catherine every month on these events. So thank you, Catherine. And thank you, everyone. Thank you, Nadine. Um, I didn't mean that to be like, let's praise Catherine, but I will take it because it is my birthday. <laughs> um, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Um, I also forgot to mention, I just wanted to give a shout out to our very first readers um, that we had on our first event, which was April 14th, 2015. That was Bill Chang, Audrey Demola, and Joseph Salvatore. And I am going to ask if anyone has any, like, as we go around, we might have a toast to Queens or literature, if anyone just wants to share a memory about the series. But I want to share one memory, which is um, I only missed hosting one event, and that was because I had not yet become a mother and I was pregnant and I thought that you could like 
host a reading series right after having a baby. So I scheduled the <laughs> event and I was like, it's like two weeks after his due date. He'll, I'll be fine. And then he was born two and a half weeks late and he was born the day of the series. And I was like in the hospital in labor. I'm like, if I get him out now, <laughs> two days and two days i can't be i was in labor for two days it didn't it didn't happen i was not hosting that event so joseph salvatore jumped in and hosted the event um gus handled the tech all by himself uh and i got this beautiful video message from our readers that night which was patrick ryan and ramon alam and lynn stager strong wishing me um uh welcome to parenthood and the and loss of your delusions basically so thank you <laughs> for that. Um, and uh, another person I really need to spotlight if I could say, I, I see you. I see you and I'm coming to you, Lexi. I'm going to spotlight you because Lexi runs the Astoria Bookshop. And the Astoria Bookshop has been our bookseller since day one. For all of our authors, there's an amazing independent bookstore in Queens. I'm glad you have a beverage. You Woo, deserve it. Lexi! Yeah, Lexi! <laughs> I want to I wanna point something yeah. out. Lexi and the Astoria Bookshop is selling books right now. You can get, if you need a physical book right away, you should definitely go to bookshop.org to the Astoria Bookshop storefront on bookshop.org. Bookshop.org slash shop slash Astoria yeah, Bookshop. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm going to do you a favor and I'm going to share the, the link uh, in the chat. Or does that not share it with the viewers? I don't think that shares it with the attendees. I'm not sure. Oh, I don't oh, know damn. how that works. Okay. <laughs> there's but, an option for all panels an and attendees. Is there? Okay, try. try it. Yes, do it. In the chat. In the chat, you can do it. Do it. Uh, attendees. An attendee should um, text me and tell me if it worked. <laughs> <laughs> Amy's our intel. <laughs> So, That's five. To all panelists and attendees. Let's there you go. Lexi's giving a link, and I see it. And I just want to tell you, I think it's coming. Maybe we'll see. Maybe. But if you go to that link, it. any books that you buy from the LIC Reading Series alumni list through tomorrow, um, which you should do all the time anyway. But through tomorrow, Lexi is generously donating ten percent of those proceeds to a new writer space that we're opening in Queens called The mm. Resort um, to help keep us afloat during the time when we can't be open. So I wanna thank Story Bookshop for basically doing everything for writers, like 100%. And Lexi, not to put you on the spot, but I don't know if there's anything else you would like to share. I'll say the thing again in case it didn't come through, bookshop.org slash shop slash Bookshop. No, that's not it. Sorry, that was the wrong link. It's a Freudian link right there. That's the right link, actually. <laughs> um, yes, I. So I I met Catherine because she was in LIC and she came um, to uh, to talk to me at the store and find out if um, we would be able to be their bookseller. And um, I am so, so glad that she did because LIC Reading Series is a really incredible uh, institution now for five years. Um, and it has, and, and Catherine is just awesome, obviously. Um, and it has been, we. It is so important for the Astoria Bookshop's mission to connect with the local Queen's writing and reading community. And that is obviously essential to what LAC Reading is doing as well. And it has been an honor to be the official bookseller for this reading series since, since literally day one. So hooray, Catherine. <laughs> hooray, Astoria Bookshop. <laughs> yeah. All right. Listen, we have so many wonderful businesses in Queens that we've partnered with. And I want to give them all a shout out because it's a hard time for small businesses and they're all, they're what make our communities. Um, first, I want to thank Queens Council on the Arts because they've been supporting the series. And um, a Story Bookshop is one of our community sponsors, but also Sweet Leaf Coffee, LIC Corner Cafe, 
um, the Court Square Diner, all of these places have given gift certificates for our raffles over the years. And of course, the Gantry Restaurant and LIC Bar. And I would be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to our regular bartender, Gareth, um, at LIC Bar, who's always there for our events. I heard somebody talking about Gareth, but I don't know what you were saying. Um, I'm going to mute you for a second, maybe, or not. You guys have been very quiet and good, so I'm going to keep you on and mute. Um, and I'm going to make a cocktail in honor of Gareth. Here we go. Let me spotlight myself so you can see what I'm doing. Um, so uh, one thing that the series, uh, a few years ago, we were featured in a book called Storied Bars of New York that talks about bars all over New York City that have some kind of literary connection. And we were the one bar in there in Queens, in the borough of Queens, um, in that whole book, which is a shame because there's a lot of literary bars in Queens, but we were featured. And each chapter in that book features a cocktail. And I recommended that our, our uh, featured cocktail was the last word. So I'm going to make a last word for Gareth, <laughs> even though I don't think he would drink one because he always makes the best hot toddies, but I'm not about to have boiling water while I'm trying to run a <laughs> webinar. All right. Lime juice, equal parts, guys. Equal parts lime juice. <clears throat> Luxardo. I think that Gareth always free pours, but uh, we're getting a chartreuse. All equal parts. Easiest cocktail you can make, except no one has these things in their uh, liquor cabinet, except my husband. I was just gonna say, Catherine, like, I don't even know what these words are. What? Go on. Wait, you know the next one. Great. Lime juice, Luxardo, chartreuse. Last I need the first one. ingredient is Gin. I know that one. How do I open this thing with the little I've hat? Never heard of it. Do you guys ever, do you anyone have this broker's hat, gin? Like, what do you, do you wear it? It's classy. <laughs> yes. All right. And then I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna free pour this one. All right. That's good enough. And then, this is very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> like Stanley Tucci level. <laughs> <laughs> the new Stanley Tucci. Ah. It's Catherine. Okay. Now it's nice and chilly, and I'm going to pour this into a lovely cocktail glass while I go around by one by one and want to spotlight each of our alumni, our beautiful alumni who are here. I would love to hear any toast you want to give to literature or to Queens or whatever you would like to say. Um, and I promise I'll have a sip after every single thing you say and get hammered. Okay. <laughs> All right. Deal. Deal. Yay. Well, let me, I'm just going to go through the gallery as I see it. Oh, look, it's Amy Shern. Oh, hi. I also have a very special cocktail. I unscrewed a bottle of wine. <laughs> that, that was the whole thing. Um, thanks so much for doing this, Catherine. Uh, I just want to say thank you to Catherine for creating this. Catherine, as, as we all know, is such a great um, and generous literary citizen, which I feel like seeps into the experience of the LIC Reading Series. Um, when I read at the LIC Reading Series, it was extremely surreal and bizarre. On my way there, I got bit by a dog. <laughs> And I was there. It must have been the strangest reading because I felt very strange. And um, I was like, hey, guys. So um, and it was like just the sort of community at its best. Everyone was, you know, just loving uh, being so like loving and sweet and helpful and, uh, you know, loving literature and uh, offering advice on tetanus shots like all at once. Um, <laughs> and it was uh just like a a great i don't know sort of spotlight on on how like warm and welcoming this um community is and um yeah it's just so nice to see you guys all here real small and flat and i wish we could all be in a room together except that now i'm afraid of being in rooms with people so i'll i'll see you never 
that was the night of my dog bite, Carly. Yes. Really, it was so weird. <laughs> so, and this is also very weird. So I don't blame Queens, but just saying things get real weird. Wow. Okay. Weird way to end it, but I'm going to toast that. <laughs> Cheers, From Amy. Brooklyn. Mm. Hi, thanks. And also I see, I'm just looking at our chat. Thank you, Ian McKellen, for the happy birthday wishes. And from David Gerard, who's in the attendant, uh, in the audience, he's one of our alumni. Um, Brielle and Hopper's there. She's also one of our alumni. And she said she drank a last word to celebrate finishing her book. So to you, Brie. All right. Next up on the toast cam is Paul Lasicki. Are you ready, Paul Lasicki? I, I can go, yes. All right. <laughs> um, happy birthday, Catherine, and happy number five to LIC. I thought I'd give um, a toast to Queens. I think when I read at LIC, which was about four years ago, I toasted the Unisphere, and I think this time I'm going to toast the walk between the ferry at Beach 108th Street and the beach. There's something about that walk that is so gritty and alive and I miss it terribly. I miss the walk past the sewage treatment plant. I miss the, the fenced off parking lot and the underpass um, beneath the subway and um, the bagel place on the corner. And um, I hope I get to see, or hope we all, those of us who live in New York get to see or get to take that walk again soon. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers. Yes, and Queens is the epicenter of everything. It is. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Hey, guess what? Oh, who's, who's reading all the alumni books in, in quarantine? Ian McKellen, you're the best, yeah. Ian, for reading all the books. <laughs> all right, you know who's up next on the spotlight cam for a toast? is Scott Cheshire. Are you ready, Scott? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. Oh, drink it first, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm drinking Pink Bubbly, which is my new favorite. And uh, I'd like to toast Catherine and the LIC Reading Series and to Queens as well. Paul, I hear that, thank you very much. Uh, I'm from there, I don't know if you are from there, um, but uh, I, I grew up in a house where there were no books, except one book, the Bible, but there were like hundreds of them. Um, so I never thought of Queens as a book place. And it wasn't until I grew up into uh, my more mature years that places like the Astoria Bookshop and like uh, the LIC Bar made me realize where I can have real pride and where I come from. So I want to thank you for that and I toast you for that. Here, here to the Story Bookshop and LIC Bar. Um, we are, uh, I'm just looking at our, our lovely commentary here. This is great, I love it. Um, everybody's doing a little chatter on the sidelines and it's amusing to me, but I don't know if everyone can see it. All right, next up on the cam is somebody who is here, I think in our very first year. Um, there's a couple of people coming up from our first year, but the next one's going to be Justin Taylor. And are you ready, Justin? Yeah. With your beverage. Oh, you were, you look great. I love the books. Got my background. beverage. All right. <laughs> thank you. I uh, thank you. <laughs> um, what do I want to say? I want to say uh, happy birthday, Catherine. I want to say thank you for having had me at the series. And I guess um, you know I left New York uh, in the middle of 2015, and so when I read in the series, I think it was my first visit back as a visitor after my wife and I moved away. Um, and it was just such an amazing night to get to come back and go to a part of the city that frankly I had never been to before and to read with Akil and Sam who are two of the most amazing live readers I've ever seen. Um, and it was just a really special night. I believe uh, me and Sam and Mark Doughton and a couple other people closed the LIC bar down. Mm -hmm. it may or may not have been advisable, but I think we did. Um, and. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you. Here's to five more years and 10 and everything else. Cheers. Thank you, Justin. And Justin, joining us from the West Coast, yeah? Yeah. Portland, Oregon. Yeah, baby. Still locked down. <laughs> so are we. Yeah. <laughs> keep it locked, keep it down. Mm -hmm. I should have asked everyone to show up with like a face mask. 
No. Mm. Hi, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we're going to go way back to our earliest reader. Oh, I just, I just spilled last word on my drink. What does that mean? I mean, I just spilled last word on my shirt. <laughs> Whoa! All righty then. Hold on a second. Drink. Mm. We're going to go to our earliest reader who's with us right now from our second event ever. You know what's coming. It's Nicole Heratunian. I remember when you came, by the way, and it was like there was some weird, weird uh, wolf stuff happening then. Um, but you can say oh. whatever you want. Can you hear me? Does this yes. work? Yes. Yeah. Um, it was a coyote and the, the title story for my book that just came out, um, was about a coyote at a children's birthday party. And right before I read at LIC reading series, there was a coyote on the roof of the bar. So I could have told like a million different stories for the queen's anecdote that we all start, um, LIC reading series with, but that was obviously mine. Um, and it was, it was the most fitting reading I've ever done, I think, because of that. Um, yeah, Queens is wild. Um, <laughs> I, I'm in exile in New Jersey right now, so I don't want to talk too much about Queens because it'll make me cry. Um, I'll talk about Catherine instead. Um, I think Amy suggested me to Catherine as a reader, so I had never met Catherine before. Um, yeah, but like by the time I showed up, I feel like we were already friends. Um, <laughs> and she actually read my book before I read, which I don't think happens. <laughs> so that was exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and one of my favorite things is such a small detail, but LAC reading series starts at eight. And like even the reading series I run, we can't swing it. Like we have to start at seven because um, of logistics. Starting at eight though made it possible for me to go um, so many times when I like, I can't go to that many literary events in real unlockdown life because I have to wait for my husband to get home from work to do the child handoff and I'm in Queens and Woodside. And by the time that happens, like I usually can't get to anything on time, but I can get to LIC reading series on time usually. And that made a huge difference for me when I had a little baby at home. Um, as did Catherine, I remember when I was like super pregnant, um, meeting up with you and holding your baby and talking about like trying to balance being a mom and a writer and um, showing up at your house right after you had Adina and sort of doing similar things. So really appreciate having a, a parent, writer, queen's friend um, running an amazing series. And I've just been to so many of them and I miss them a lot. Happy birthday, Catherine. Thank you, Nicole. Cheers. Cheers. Um, miss you in Queens. I want you to come back as soon as you can. And yes, I meeting you up with you when guys was a little baby. And was I telling you maybe um, don't schedule hosting a reading series two weeks after you were supposed to give birth. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> Important yeah, stuff, stuff like, like that. that. Um, I want to say a shout out. I see some more people in the audience to say hi, Miranda. Hi, Beverly Whitmore is out there. JT Price. Lots of awesome folks. I forgot that I had a special jacket to wear because this night <laughs> deserves sparkles. So I'm going to grab that while I pull up our next beautiful alumna. Her name is Marie Helene Hertino. I'm going to spotlight your ass right now, Marie. And I'm going to go get my jacket while you talk to the people. I'm supposed to be toasting you, Catherine. <laughs> You're leaving? This is so difficult. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're back. Okay, great. Oh, wow. Oh, you can't hear me. I can hear you now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm I back. talked to Julie Bunton for a moment, and it made me so happy. <laughs> okay, you're back. I'm back. Catherine, happy birthday. <sighs> you told us to prepare a toast. I know that. I know that you told us to prepare a toast. I do not know any toasts, and I don't know what to say when I'm, when I'm called upon to do so, but you also know that I lived in Queens, and um, I lived for six years in Woodside. I only know three or four poems by heart, and so what I thought I would do is recite the short poem I memorized from the wall of a bar in Queens. <laughs> okay, I don't know the poet, maybe Yeats, I'm not sure. Um, 
but it's short and it goes like this. Some Guinness was spilled on the bar room floor when the bar was closed for the night. Out of his hole crept a wee brown mouse who stood in the pale moonlight. He lapped up the frothy brew from the floor, then back on his haunches he sat. And all night long you could hear him roar, bring on the goddamn cat! <laughs> <laughs> That's all I've got. Oh, that's amazing. Maria, I can't believe you memorized that beautiful poem. And um, I don't know the author. Um, maybe, I think, I'm pretty sure it's WB. Might be. I guess Gus might know from uh, his work at LIC Bar, perhaps. Maybe it's a no. Okay. I believe that's from Saints and Sinners. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Good guy. So, yeah, <laughs> the, the outtakes. <laughs> All right, um, that was amazing. Who else? Oh, we got so much chitter chatter on the side. I love it. Oh, what a lovely crowd we have out here tonight. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, I'm just gonna pause and say thank you. To, this is making my night. Uh, I I love this birthday so much right now, even though I'm stuck at home. Okay. <laughs> Next up is uh, somebody who was here. I maybe it was two or three years ago. I'm trying to remember exactly when Jesse Chafee was here, uh, but I'm going to bring her up and she can say what she's got to say and she can unmute herself if she's on mute. Perhaps are you on mute? I'm not sure. Thanks. Can you <laughs> not. Hear me? I can hear Happy you. Happy birthday, Catherine. Thank you. Also, I want to echo um, for starting this evening at eight so that I could be here as well and not putting our little guy down to bed. <laughs> um, so Brendan and my writing mentor, Lindsay Abrams, um, used to say that your first and most important job as a writer is to find your people, um, which is true, but in a solitary craft um, you, where you can be very isolated under normal circumstances, never mind during a pandemic, uh, that can be challenging. Um, so thank God for writers like you, Catherine who bring us together, who on top of your own writing and work and family have spent years not only lifting writers up, but creating a wonderful community, celebrating your home community in Queens and hosting gatherings that connect and inspire us. So I wanna lift a glass to people who bring us together and help us find our people, to Catherine and the community she's built, to five years of LIC, and to all of the gatherings to come. Oh, cheers. cheers. Who are all you parents who have your kids in bed by eight o'clock? <laughs> <laughs> Teach me your ways. My son is up right now watching a movie. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. You're amazing. Thank you so much. Um, I think some people wanted to know who the dashing gentleman is next to you. Oh, uh, <laughs> my husband, <laughs> Kylie. <laughs> Aw, thanks for being here. All right, yeah, this is fun. Yay! Hey, guess what? Guess who's coming up next? It's none other than the host of Nerd Jeopardy. We know <laughs> him. We love him. We know he probably has something really tasty in his glass right now. It's Ryan Chapman, y'all. Hi, everybody. Um, happy birthday, Catherine. Um, and um, I have a, a martini. Um, my wife just dropped it off. She made it. It's beautiful. And it has a little cocktail onion. So technically, it's a Gibson. <laughs> um, and I got really nervous about a toast because the only other toasts I've ever given were like, you know, pretty late at a wedding when no one really is paying attention to like the fifth person giving a toast. So I took your, you said we could talk about literature. So um, I like, okay. So I went a little, I don't know. I don't want to like, I try to be like a, a type A person about it or like a person who likes to do homework. Okay, basically I was like, what is this like? And I was like, okay, it's kind of like the London Blitz. We're all trying to make art despite like the ever present awfulness. And I found this like um, collection of Graham Greene's letters. And I wanted to read just like two real short things about what Graham Greene said during Life Under the Blitz when he was like writing books, getting plays produced, trying to write screenplays. And he says, the whole war is good for someone like me who has always suffered from anxiety neurosis. I turned down work left and right just for the fun of not caring. 
And then he ran down to a theater to see a production of Brighton Rock. And he wrote an extraordinarily long letter to the theater producer. And I thought you guys um, would appreciate that this is what he wrote. And I think this is actually very helpful for writers and, and maybe readers, I don't know, definitely writers. Apropos of our telephone conversation this morning, I went to see Brighton Rock at Oxford on Tuesday and was horrified by certain changes. These seemed to ruin the play for the sake of allowing the actress Hermione Baddeley to fling a heart throb to the back of the gallery. She is very bad piece of miscasting. Her performance is on the overacted level of a review sketch and her grotesqueness is all wrong for the part. That is beside the point. These are my quarrels with the production and unless the producer will agree to meet our wishes, over the following, I must insist my name be removed from all programs and posters and that no reference to me or my book be made in any publicity put out by the firm. Then he writes an extremely long and petty list of grievances with the production. At the end of this, the editor of the book notes, changes were made to the script to meet Green's criticisms. And even though he was never happy with the production, he made sure that his royalties were paid and that his relatives had complimentary tickets. <laughs> and so I hope that um, we can all be at least as uh, witty as Graham Greene and never as petty as Graham Greene. And uh, that, you know, life is, life is bad, but people like you guys and I guess Graham Greene make it uh, a little better. Thanks, Catherine. Uh, cheers, Ryan. Leave it to the host of Nerd Jeopardy to bring an actual book <laughs> to the festivities. I've, I've got nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was wonderful and I think uh, I don't know if he knows but I just bumped someone else into the panel crew so we might hear from somebody else uh, later on with the toast I saw some alumni if any alumni who are watching want to be bumped in as a panelist let me know and I'll bump you in so uh, so we can see your beautiful faces or just you know hide in your bathrobe if that's what you prefer okay <laughs> we are going to move on to another two-time LAC Reading Series participant, and that is none other than the fabulous Megan Abbott. Um, Megan, are you ready? Because we're ready for you, and we see the top of your head only. Sorry, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've had some drinks. <laughs> Good. Um, oh, this is so, um, this is the best. Um, as a Queens dweller and, uh, and a two-time uh, reader and, and more than that attendee, I'm just so grateful. I've lived in Queens for 15 years and, uh, you know, when the Story of Bookshop came along and LIC uh, came along, Catherine and Lexi, it just, uh, it just was transformative to me and it just opened me up to so many, so much more of the Queens literary community that I had been aware of that was going on all along so also I just keep thinking and I know we all feel this way and this is why everybody should buy a book from uh, Astoria Bookshop uh, through bookshop.org is that this moment's made me more aware than ever how we have to fight for the the literary community and the institutions that matter to us in this city and um, I know I for one am, am ready to do that when we come out of this and uh, to support um, our local businesses and and events like these so I'm so grateful to you Catherine and uh, here happy birthday oh cheers um I have to say uh that Megan Abbott is like an amazing supporter of the literary community and all things in Queens at any time of whenever like from the very beginning she was just so generously a part of the series and so I can't wait to see what the pandemic has lit under you to do <laughs> even more of um all right, we are gonna get through a few more toasts and then uh, as promised, the Magic Silver Box is making an appearance tonight. So, mm. hey writers, you're not off the hook yet. You might have to answer some questions. <laughs> okay, next up we have somebody who um, was in our only event that was held in the bar proper and not in the carriage house because we had um, an especially large crowd that evening. It was uh, Mir Jacob, Tracy O'Neill, and John Leguizamo. And we have Tracy O'Neill here with us tonight. Tracy, I'm gonna bring you on up so we can hear from you. And congratulations, you just earned your PhD. Yeah. Hi, thank you so much. 
Hi. Um, yeah, well, thank you, Catherine, for, um, for having us all here. Um, I love the series so much, and I always think to myself when I see you that um, you are like the person in the literary world who has like the panache of David Bowie um, and um, you know, could also bring something to Queens that's like even better than soup dumplings. Um, so thank you for doing that. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot. You're pretty great. Um, so, but I was thinking about um, when you had us and I, you know, you asked us to, to bring like a Queens anecdote and um, I didn't really, I didn't have a good one. So I brought some like bad Queens jokes um, that were like on Twitter or something. Um, and so I was thinking about that and you know, I'm pretty much in the same place today. I didn't have a, I didn't have a good anecdote, but um, what I did have was um, Google once more as we all do in quarantine. So um, I thought that I would uh, tell you guys a joke um, about uh, not Queens the Borough, but uh, Queens is in Queen Elizabeth the <laughs> Second. Um, and somebody, some some person on Twitter named Pete Stegemeyer had this joke um, during Brexit, and it was, um, I knew Queen Elizabeth the Second had longevity, but I didn't think she'd outlive her country. Oh. I know, oh. I know, I know. <laughs> Some harsh political humor. Um, so, but thank you, thank you so much for doing this. Um, thank you for creating the conditions in which John Leguizamo could kind of like gently make fun of me in front of a crowd in that <laughs> bar instead of the carriage house. Um, that was a real highlight for me. Oh. Cheers, thank you so much, Cheers. Tracy. Mm -hmm. um, and I think maybe we discovered that might be um, the person you quoted. Maybe that's the poet that Marie, possibly. <laughs> I think it was. It was. I just want to, did I bring that up before? Oh, I lost it. Oh, we'll find it somewhere um, once upon a time. I had a picture from that. Oh, did I have it? I'll show it sometime. Okay. We are going to uh, move on to our next beautiful alumna and she's coming from a different time zone as well her name starts with j and her other name starts with b i'm just saying these things to prep you it is <laughs> julie button julie button yay hey hi everyone happy birthday catherine but just quick uh misconception clear up you know, Michigan is in the Eastern time zone. Oh, shit! <laughs> Everyone who texts me these days is like, what time zone are you in? And I'm like, look, you guys, it's a quick flight to New York. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't live in New York anymore. And actually, when I was thinking about um, your request, Catherine, to think of a toast, like Marie and some others have said, I immediately was like, I can't do that, and I can't prepare anything, and I don't know what to say, and I'll totally freak out when that time comes, and it's already happening. Um, but... <laughs> What I did keep thinking about kind of all day today is, and basically every day for the last five months before the pandemic, and somehow even more so now that I'm not there, um, is how much I miss New York and all of you and how profoundly homesick I feel for that place. And I think Long Island City Reading Series um, was one of those spaces for me in New York where like the magic of New York was always in overdrive. Uh, like you would have this crazy intense conversation at the bar with someone you never met before, or you'd meet like a hero that you've always loved. Um, Megan Abbott, hi, <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> it's still really cool that you're here for me. Um, and it's just so special you were able to do that. And I think for those of us who aren't in New York and maybe like Justin and the people who are attendees who are in New York now, um, and maybe were once probably feel this way too, but even just making this event tonight, like you brought a little bit of that sort of New York magic into whatever you know weird half internet world we all live in in this moment um so i'm really grateful for that and i'm grateful for everything that you've done and i hope the long island city reading series goes on for years and years and years um so cheers and happy birthday oh thank you cheers what are you drinking julie uh like amy i'm drinking white wine from a screw top I think it's a cupcake Pinot Grigio. Yes, Ooh, great only the best. <laughs> from my local Kroger's. Um, 
I'm double fisting. Hey, <laughs> because it's the anniversary of the reading series and it's my birthday. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. Um, I'm so glad that you could be here from our time zone. And I will remember <laughs> that now. <laughs> um, next up is uh, a two time reader at the series, uh, one of our more recent readers, in fact, and her name is Carly Moore. Let's give it up for Carly. Hi, Carly. I'm so nervous. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and my cat's butt has disappeared, so I can't even hide behind her. Um, I wanted to show you that on my little special cup, I have the face of a person. <gasps> yes. And Catherine, this is for you. Um, <laughs> if I see you, I'll give you this little cup. And I hope I can do that soon. Happy birthday. Um, everyone has said such amazing things um, about you and about the series. Um, I want to echo a couple of those things. I do think, think it's so amazing how you've made a community. Um, and you've made such a fun community. Um, I didn't know about the series until the first time that I read. And I had such a good time. Like the silver box is amazing. And I want to point out that I actually have something that I won from the silver box. <laughs> which is my little um, Black Panther, um, which is actually I keep near me when I'm writing. So, um, you know, you win prizes at this reading, which is amazing. Um, mm -hmm. So not only is it fun, um, but um, you get to hear amazing people and, and be part of um, something that I think is becoming more and more rare. And I want to echo Megan and say that we really have to hold on and fight for these things right now. And, and long run reading series is something that I want to fight for and I can't wait till we're back in person. Um, the second and last thing I want to say is um, the first time I read, um, you, you know, there's the amazing fireplace. And I remember that you were, I think you were very pregnant, like maybe eight months pregnant. And you like climbed all over the room, like you got, <laughs> you like climbed up in front of the fireplace, you like walked on tables, and I was like, this is amazing, she's such a fucking badass. Um, and it's been so amazing to have you as a, a mothering role model and a writing role model, and I just also just want to thank you for texting me all the time lately, it's been so wonderful to have your check-in. So here's to the reading series, and here's to Catherine. Sure. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you, Carly. Um, Carly brought me a present, guys. Just, just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I want to say, I love that you have your plastic animal from the Magic Silver Box, because I want to say that um, Josephine Rowe was trying to join us, but the last minute couldn't. She was going to be our furthest distance participant from Australia. But I know that she also has a plastic animal in Australia. From the magic silver box so i know i love that queens is going far and wide and also thank you for appreciating climbing all over the bar when i was pregnant because that always made gus totally nervous <laughs> yeah i can see it now hey we got to keep on rolling so i'm gonna roll on over to somebody who's a little north of the city right now his name is jason tugal he also has read at lic reading series twice Hello, thank you so much. Hello. I just want to say simply thank you, Catherine, and also Carl, for creating a cultural community that leads with love and where it's where like fun and ideas are the same thing. And there's like no pretense and no competition. It's just lovely. So thank you. Thank Happy you. birthday. Cheers. Hello. And thank you for thanking Carl, who has walked through here a couple times and who is wrangling both of our children. I mean, currently. Carl's very busy at those events. He's he working is. hard. Yeah. Yeah. Carl's taking, he's one in the back taking the pictures. He's like my Ed McMahon who's laughing at all my jokes. Um, <laughs> you know, and he's also the guy who's always at the bar at intermission when I told everyone to get back and I have to go find him so we can start the second half. So. Fair. Yes. Whatever. That's fine. Oh, Josephine's here. Oh, okay, good. All right, we're going to hear from Josephine in a bit, but we were just name checking you, Josephine. I don't know if you can hear me yet. Um, okay, but before we get there, we're going to go to none other than Morgan Jerkins. 
And I'm going to put you up to hear from you right now, Morgan. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hi. Um, yeah, uh, I'm nervous now to talk. Uh, just want to say happy birthday, <laughs> Catherine, and um, congratulations for continuing the LSE reading series for five whole years. Um, I'm originally from South Jersey, and um, the literary culture there is kind of non-existent. I think someone mentioned earlier that um, the only book that they had in their house was the Bible. For me, it was like the Bible and maybe one Terry McMillan novel. Um, so it wasn't really <laughs> broad at first. Um, and I first met Catherine when I was working as an editorial assistant at Catapult. And when she invited me to um, read at the reading series, I was kind of nervous because I was like, I don't think I was a published author yet. And I still was trying to navigate New York. And I was like, Long Island City, where is that? <laughs> um, but it was really fun, and I, I just want to give a toast to not only the Catherine and the LIC reading series, but also to the neighborhood, well, the, not neighborhood, excuse me, borough of Queens for being as diverse <laughs> and resilient as it is, but also just to the broad literary culture and how we're all adapting so quickly and gracefully throughout this pandemic, even if we, there's so much uncertainty surrounding us, I, it has really um, invigorated me to see how much bookstores and literary citizens like you are just banding together during these really trying times. So cheers to all you. I have my, my Perrier, my lovely Perrier. <laughs> so smart. <laughs> uh, all right, everyone uh, on Morgan's queue, remember to hydrate. <laughs> so important. Mm. All right, we're going to go to um, next is David Bergerard. Late breaking, David Bergerard has come uh, to say hello to us. David, how are you doing? Hi, everyone. You up. Uh, it's really great to, uh, to see you all. Um, those of you I've read with at LIC and those of you who are my friends from uh, other avenues of life, um, I see that I'm uh, a free, that I keep on freezing in embarrassing positions, but uh, hopefully you can hear me. Um, in any case, uh, I just want to thank Catherine for, uh, um, for having such a great, great reading series as everybody said. Um, just amazing, uh, all the things that she's accomplished. I remember um, a few days after the 2000, 2016 election, uh, my wife and I and uh, Catherine and Catherine's uh, then uh, more or less newborn son, uh, Gaius, uh, walked across the, uh, um, the Queensboro Bridge in protest. Um, and it made it feel like there was uh, maybe a little bit more hope uh, than there uh, might have been otherwise. Uh, I see that I keep on freezing. I don't know if you guys can hear me or not, but in any case, um, it, 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 really good. Have it right there. Thank you, David. And um, and uh, that was so nice. And it was really wonderful to go over the bridge with you guys. Uh, and I wanted to say bye to Jen Baker, who had to peace out. And I know we're running a little over time, but we are we are near the end of our toast, and we're gonna jump into the magic silver box real quick because we got to do it. We got so many great questions into the magic silver box. But before we do, I just need to point out that we have somebody from the other side of the globe with us right now, and I'm gonna bring her up on spotlight, and she's gonna unmute herself, or I can unmute you if you want me to. I'm um, bringing up Josephine Rowe. Can we hear you? Yeah. There you are. <laughs> Hi, sorry, I, I'm not very good at Zoom. I'm just here <laughs> to uh, quietly slip into the background because I've had no sleep. <laughs> oh. um, yeah, it's Sunday morning here. Yeah. Uh, it's lovely to see all your faces. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, I'm going I'm to mute myself again. And just, That's uh, totally uh, fine. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just excited that Josephine made it here. And Josephine, I want to tell you that um, Carly was showing off her little plastic animal before. And I was like, I think there's one in Australia. Oh, there it is. She has it. <laughs> Two animals, Carly and Josephine. <sighs> Beautiful. All right. Speaking of plastic animals, it's time for the magic silver box. And before I jump into the magic silver box, I'm just going to show you a couple more um, memories here. Let me see if I can share my screen because it is a webinar after all. Let's learn from each other. Okay. <laughs> Tell me, can everyone see that picture? <laughs> yes. There we have three of our people with us here tonight, Julie, Sarah, and Megan. We had an event here with Chloe uh, Caldwell, Aline Miles, and Alyssa Chappelle. Um, this was a fun night. 
<laughs> where um, our special guest unannounced was Lincoln Michelle when his book Upright Beasts came out. And I believe he read that night with Jim Shepard and Victor Laval. Um, we always have cake at our anniversaries. That was the first mm -hmm. one. We had Jonathan Lee and Natalie Harnett and Alexander Chi Reed. Um, that's why we had cake earlier tonight. Um, here we are with the cake. Oh, and I was pregnant. I'm always pregnant mm. or having children. <laughs> uh, another cake. Um, a beautiful yeah. crowd. If everyone, if everyone wants to see the carriage house, you miss the carriage house. I miss the carriage house. That was beautiful. Yeah. Um, and just to point out that the magic silver box has been around for a while. Here it is at our event with Tracy O'Neill and here it is on some other event. But, uh, <laughs> I'm going to, I have it here right now, and I'm going to show it to you. Let's see. Here we go. All right. It's been, it's been through, it's been through it. You can see it's a little, like, it's got some tears, right? But uh, my, the original idea was that I was going to rapid fire, pull out some questions that I was going to have a few people answer. But, um, but it's already nine o'clock, and I don't want to keep people forever because I know people get zoomed out. Um, but I'm going to ask four questions and maybe we'll just pull four people from the crowd to answer. And the way we usually do LSC reading series is I think of something and then the writers have to guess what I'm thinking and whoever's closest gets the question, but there's way too many of you. So I'm just going to, um, rapid fire attack you and give you a question if you look game and if you look like, no, Catherine, I have no brains right now. You can just be like this and I'll respect that. All right. The first, um, we wanted to support our local businesses, uh, people who've been doing, doing some LIC stuff over the years. So uh, thanks to LitHub, we, uh, we, we bought some things from our normal donators uh, to keep them in business. And we're going to ship these out via USPS. Go USPS! Stay in business! <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. We count on you. And uh, so whoever uh, uh, questions we ask out of the Magic Silver Box, you're going to get these prizes shipped to you via USPS. And feel free to leave the box in your doorstep to quarantine it for two days. I won't be offended. Wipe off the product with alcohol, whatever you need to do. All right. The first question is going to get this box of beans from Sweet Leaf Coffee. They roast their own beans. Uh, they have three locations in Long Island City, in fact, and they roast their beans in Greenpoint. This is Ethiopia Nano Chala variety of beans. And I hope you're in the audience. Um, we have such, such great questions here. Um, the first one I'm going to ask is, uh, the question is, first I'm going to pick the person who's getting it. Let's see here. Hmm. Who looks ready? You know what? Marie Helene Bertino looks ready. You ready? Okay. You ready? Marie, the question is, and this, this coffee is going out to Katie Boland. Thank you for the question. The question is, what is your fail safe karaoke song? Oh. Um. <laughs> I actually don't like karaoke. Oh, no. <laughs> um, Marie, you're a good singer. That's why I don't like karaoke. Oh. No, no, I'm not a good singer, but um, I can never hear myself when I sing karaoke, so I usually don't do it. Also, I want to say, um, I'm sorry I'm not toasting you all. It's not because I don't love you. I'm just drinking water, and you can't toast with water because it's bad luck. Yeah. If Wait, really? Oh, no. I know. I'm sorry, Morgan. I didn't want to... Morgan, I'm sorry. I think actually Perrier is totally fine. It's okay. Just, no. It's bubbles. It's bubbles. It's okay. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's, not, that's not regular water. You're fine. I was going to mention it, but then I was like, let her live her life. Um, if I were to do karaoke tomorrow, there is a song I've been practicing. It's Aretha Franklin's um, Ain't, Ain't Nobody. That's what I would say. Mm. I love it. We're not going to make you sing it. As much as I know our audience wants that, I'm not going to do that to you because I love you. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay, that was a great question, Katie. We're going to move on to the next one. And the next one is going to get this box of beans. Hold on, let me spotlight myself so you can see. From Sweet Leaf Coffee! But this is a different blend. This is the Columbia... Giovanni Lascano blend. 
very different from the other one. Okay. Let's see who's going to get this question. Let me look at the crowd. Let me look at the crowd and see. Oh, okay, some people look scared. Some people look <laughs> pensive. Some people look like uh, Ryan Chapman. I think you can do Hello. this, Ryan Chapman. Okay. This is a this is kind of an intense question, but I think this is an intense, awesome. I think this is an intense blend of beans. So. But I don't get the beans though. Someone else does. But you get the joy of knowing that somebody stays caffeinated in quarantine if they have a grinder because these are whole beans. That means a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan deserves beans. Well, we'll try to get you some, Ryan. Okay. This is a uh, Courtney Cole's getting these beans. Courtney asks you, Ryan, what are three words an ex might use to describe your work? Oh, God. <laughs> Marie loves this question. She's like, thank God I didn't get that question. I'm so glad I did not get that question. So annoying. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> oh, my God. Man. <laughs> okay, I mean, I just slammed the martini, so. <laughs> Fucking was better. Oh, you made a sentence. I don't creative, know. Ryan, creative. You know what? You know what, Ryan? If I can somehow secure more beans, I'm going to mail you some because that was a tough question. That was a tough question. Fucking was better than Ryan's writing? I only have three words. You have to interpret how you wish. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, fine. It could, fine. It, could be a gerund, it could be a gerund phrase or it could be the noun. You don't know. <laughs> uh, you're such a nerd. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. I think um, I think our next question is going to get let's see some uh, some beans from Sweet Leaf. <laughs> Yes, I'm sorry. I like not everybody is open right now. <laughs> I, I wanted to actually buy things that were actively like going in the till. So um, this is the slap shot blend, and uh, this is these beans are going to be mailed to the Bronx to Kristen McFarland. Um, I have to find the person, but I think I know who I'm going to go with, and I think. I think that um I think Tracy's looking pretty uh pretty you know like she could be up for anything right now. So Tracy the question is what for Tracy the other question is <laughs> how has this time in quarantine changed your reading and writing habits? Um oh okay. Well, I mean it hasn't Right, like I still, I, I read a lot and I, and I write a lot. Um, I'm sorry, that's like, a, that's a, like a really boring answer. It's changed other things, but like it hasn't, it hasn't changed my reading and writing very much. I just do more of them. You sorry. No, I kind of, I love, <laughs> that's like gives me a sense of hope that, because I know a lot of people are having a hard time writing and let alone like reading more than a page of a book right now. Um, but you know what would help you read more than a page of a book if you're having a hard time is to go to the Astoria Bookshop page on bookshop.org oh, and order one of the books mm -hmm. from our alumni because there's an alumni list there on the bookshop.org page. Guess what? I'm going to ask one more question, but I'm going <laughs> to ask for super quick response from each of you on this one because it, it has us thinking ahead and I like that. Um, and it's a very special prize. It's a very special prize that is hiding. Oh no. Where'd it go? Okay. I promise you that I have a plastic animal. <laughs> And it was up here 
and I managed to hold on to all my booze, but not the animal, but I'll find it. But the asker of this question is going to get a plastic otter. Ooh. Picture in your minds an otter while you think of your answer to this question. I'm just going to stroll, scroll through you guys. It's going to be easier for the last person because you get to listen to everybody else. But just very quickly as we wrap up here, because I think it's a nice way to um, think, think ahead. This question is from Jessica Wu. And the question is, Jessica, you get an otter, by the way. <laughs> the question is, what are your hope? What, 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 Tracy, what? No, is this Jessica Wu who took a class with me in Catapult? Is there a way for you to ask that? I don't know. Can you, <laughs> is she here? Let me see if she's still in the room. <laughs> no, I don't know. She might be because okay, she's, well, left. she's left. Oh, she's left. She's getting oh. the last question. So Ooh, she she, left. Well, anyway, she's a very good writer. So everybody look okay. out for when she has a book coming out because she's hilarious. Okay. <laughs> that puts even more pressure on her question, Tracy. Oh, fuck. Okay. Because her question <laughs> is... What are your hopes for the future of publishing? And I'm gonna just go in a row, and I know I know this is putting you on the spot, Amy Shern, but you're up oh. first, and you're gonna answer this real quickly. What are your hopes for the future of publishing? You can answer it in a sentence or two. What are your hopes for the I'm, future of publishing? I'm gonna go ahead and say, I hope that there is a future of publishing. That's it. All right. That's all I want. That's all I hope for. <laughs> that's a that's a lot. That's a good goal, Paul. Thank you, Lisicki. Um, no more big advances. I would like it to be equalized. I like that. I like that's that. Good. All right, Scott Cheshire. Can I go local and yeah. say? I hope to finish a second book and people like it. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> I love it. I hope you finish the second book too. I want to read it. Same. All right. Next up is Justin Taylor. Hopes for the future of publishing. Um, well, I kind of want to second what Paul Lisicki and Amy Shern said. Um, and that, that might be enough. <laughs> I, I hope it has a future and I hope it's a little more uh, equitable and sane than it's been. Um, we're the last people who need to be chasing unicorns. It's just not what we believe in. And, you know, um, so they should chase people. <laughs> I love that. That, um, that reminds me of a book that my kids just got for Easter called, I believe in bunny corns. So unicorns, eh, bunny corns, we can all be bunny I believe corns. in chasing people. What can I say? <laughs> all right, what is, the, what is your hope for the future of publishing, Nicole Heratunian? Um, short stories. I hope short story collections are um, easier to sell and people acknowledge that people want to read them and that they're good. I hope that too. And I have high hopes that, oh, um, that people will, will recognize that, especially now. Like short stories can pack so much in and be so important. Okay. I'm moving on. You're a great short story writer. I'm moving on to another great short story writer, Marie Helene. Bertina, what are your hopes for the future of publishing? Can I ask for two things? <laughs> yes, you can, because I have two drinks. Okay. Um, my book comes out June 2nd. I would love for publishing to still be around by then. <laughs> that, would be, that would be amazing. I hope I get my finished copies in the mail. I hope that's something that can happen. Um, more importantly, more diverse mastheads and faculties period. Those whose job it is to hire editors and professors, that they do what they're supposed to do and hire people who look like the world looks. Thank you. <laughs> yes, here, here. I'm going to actually raise my shiny uh, champagne flute to that. Mm. All right. Snaps. Now we're moving on to Jesse Chafee. Uh, I second Marie that I hope we see more voices at every level of publishing and um, also I want to give a shout out to the indies and hoping that they get all the support they need to get through this time and, and have a bright future too. Here, 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 here. All right, Mr. Ryan Chapman, he of the gerund. 
<laughs> um, yeah, I, I think um, this is going to sound utopian, but state support for artists. If Germany and Canada can deem that people who contribute to the arts are important to the culture, uh, you know, maybe come after November that uh, the U.S. will follow suit. Here, here. Indeed. <laughs> you're, getting, you're getting a lot of support uh, in the chats over there for that one, Ryan. All right, we're going to go now to Megan Abbott and her hopes for the future of publishing. Yeah, I, I just want to say I hope that this has all made people, I think some people more aware of um, the evils of Amazon and they've found these other ways to get books and they no longer need to rely on, on that, that click when there's so many wonderful independent bookstores that we should be supporting and then curate choices, make recommendations, jo join us in the community. So um, here's to the Indies again. Cheers to the Indies. We're getting, we got two votes for Indies. Only two. Everyone else likes the big houses. <laughs> Um, Tracy, did we didn't get you yet on the future of publishing, did we? No? Okay. Right. Um, so, yeah, I, I would say that I would love to see publishing stop um, pandering to false populism and both sideism, by which I mean I would love to see them, um, you know, not publishing, say, you know, people who have left the Trump administration in flames, um, or people who are a relative of Donald Trump, um, so on and so forth. Um, and it doesn't have to be Donald Trump, but people that are on the right. Basically, I would like to see more principled publishing. Um, so I Here. see you, big five. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So let's just be very clear, the Indies are not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Here, here. All right, Miss, I'm in the same time zone as you, Julie Button. Unmute yourself, Julie Button. Uh, I mean, publishing. I Wait, can you, you, can, you guys can hear me? I can right? hear you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I really couldn't agree more with, any, uh, with everything that everyone has said, so I'm just seconding it all. And I, maybe just to say one, to add one thing to the mix, I would say that one thing that was um, growing quite tiresome for, for me, being so close to the publishing industry um, for many years in New York is watching editors not, sort of everywhere across the board. And this is not an indictment of any one place at all. Just want to make that clear. Um, not take risks creatively and aesthetically in the work that they were choosing to publish. And I just, I would love to see more risk taking. And I hope that what's going on right now doesn't mean that people become um, afraid to publish new voices and new, um, I don't know, new ways of thinking about what fiction can be. Um, especially. So, yeah. And also everything y'all said. <laughs> and a big ditto from Julie. Love it. Um, Carly Moore, what are your hopes for the future of publishing? Are you on mute? No. <laughs> I'm unmuted. Um, okay. Because everyone said so many amazing things that I agree with, I'm going to add some different things. Um, um, I would like the future of publishing to involve touching people, um, of course, consensually, but I really want to be in, <laughs> I want to be in person. Um, I want to see you in person and, and hug you. Um, and along that same line of thinking, I want dirtier books. I want more queer books. I want sex to be okay everywhere. I love that. And I love that you got consent in there too. Very important. <laughs> <laughs> um, we may have lost a panelist along the way, but we're going to move on to Morgan Jerkins for her hopes for the future of publishing. My hopes for the future for publishing is there's no editorial system making $35,000 or less. <laughs> yeah. oh, that is a good one. <laughs> yeah. In my perfect world, anybody who lives in New York City should be making at least 65, 70K in my yes. perfect world. So, yeah, no more of that. No more $35,000. Lots of health insurance, dental insurance, and benefits. <laughs> Cheers. Hear that. Um, 
And I'm going to just hit David Bergerard real quick here to see if he has any hopes for the future of publishing on his choppy feed. Go for it, David. <laughs> These are uh, all amazing ideas. I don't uh, have um, anything to add other than to um, ditto them. Uh, I would say on the on the advanced question, I, I would just make a uh, make an exception for everyone on the Zoom call. If anybody wants to pay <laughs> a million dollar advances, I think that's acceptable. But, but, but nobody else. <laughs> All right, uh, David Bergerard, Robin Hooding this shit and uh, wanting everyone to get a million dollar advance and share. Um, I think that we have possibly lost Jason Tugal. I know that he probably echoes everything that you're saying. Um, Josephine, do you want to add anything at this point for your hopes of, yes? Okay, I'm going to put you on and I'm going to unmute you one second. Let's find you. Where'd you go? You disappeared. Can you unmute yourself? You got it. You took my laughter as wanting to contribute. Actually, I, I agree with everything everybody has said. Um, I really liked Paul's, Paul's comments on redistribution of that. <laughs> I love the idea of braver, more intrepid narratives that maybe um, see humans as part of, part of a greater configuration rather than being completely human-centric. Um, and yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, I am, um, I've loved so much hearing from all of you and your wonderful words and I miss hosting the series so much. We've gone so late that my son's going to come in and say a quick hello to everybody. You want to come say hi real fast guys as we're, as we're finishing off? Guys! Want to show them what you have here? What do you got? Hi guys! All right, it's real late and it's his best. Truck. It was Carl who got a shout hey, out. Carl. Right hey, Carl. Hi, Carl. Thank you. Some of yes, you. Catherine's family. It's for your mouth. Where's that cava? Oh. All right, we're just wrapping up. <laughs> what? I'm just going to say, what? When will we get to read all of the cake? Oh, oh we're gonna yes! Eat, we're going to eat more cake during your bath, and we're going to eat more cake tomorrow, <laughs> and we're going to have cake all month long, because I like celebrating birthdays for a month. Yeah. All right. So, y'all, I just want to say thank you so much for all of you being here. I also want to say that we, um, we've been going for five years now, mostly every month, except in the past year when things got a little shaky. Um, but it's been, I think, almost 150 writers who've come through. LIC reading series and uh, it it means a lot to me that you guys are here and and and, and um, it's like the brightest moment in my month every month and I miss you all so much and I thank all of our writers all of our alumni for being here all of the attendees who are here listening and um, I think we're recording this and we'll post it uh, so people can check back later and pour a drink and get drunk virtually all over again <laughs> big applause to Queens and to writing Woo. Woo. Congratulations, Congratulations Catherine. Birthday. Birthday. Catherine, you're the best. We love you. Love we you love too. You. Bye. 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 Catherine. Okay, but I have two, mommy, just so you know, I have two folders. Mommy, mommy. Well. mommy. So what, what do I do? Mommy. Gaius. Gaius. Mommy. mommy. Hi, Gaius. Monday. Quarantine. Hi. Everyone's saying hi to you, guys. Want to say hello back? Hi, guys. Mm -hmm. Look, look at all the people waving at you. Whoa. All at the same time. Okay. <laughs> That's Pippi.